So now you understand the basic terms and the betting order, but do you know when to push your chips and how to win hands pre-flop? Hey internet show friend Dominic here with njcasino.com. But before getting started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give a little mustache tickle to that like button while you're at it. So to become a pro at betting, you're gonna need to remember three basic things. Knowing your cards, your position at the table, and most importantly, how to present your strengths and weaknesses to your opponents. Now I might sound a little philosophical here, but when it comes to basic betting strategy, knowing is half the battle. The most fundamental skill that every player needs is the ability to know what hands are possible by looking at their own cards, plus all the community cards. Yeah. In other words, you need to know at a glance what you're holding, the potential combinations you can make from the cards, and most importantly, what your opponent could or couldn't have based on the cards in the center and the blocker cards you're holding. For example, if there's no potential for three or more community cards to be connected into a straight, you can rule that hand out right away. If there are no paired cards in the center, nobody can have a full house. And when there are less than three cards sharing a suit, nobody can have a flush. But remember, this goes double for you. So don't go around pretending to hold a big hand when you could not possibly have one based on these observations. The next thing I want to talk about is position, because your position at the table is everything. Besides the blind positions that we've covered previously, we're also gonna be talking about the under the gun position or UTG, middle as well as late positions. UTG players are positioned immediately to the left of the big blind and are the first to act pre-flop. Now, if you play aggressively in this position, you can shake out a few weak hand holders and even potentially fold out those in the blinds pre-flop if your raise is big enough. But early position hands should mainly consist of high pocket pairs or high value suited connectors. Think pocket jacks, do pocket aces, or even ace king, ace queen suited. These kinds of hands. When you're in that position, these are what you're looking for. Always be on the tight side with your raising in early position as you may have potential callers waiting to act after you before any community cards are actually dealt. Now, players in middle positions should also raise with a narrow range, but they should be perceptive to the actions of the players in late positions. Middle position is where you should consider opening up your playable hand range. And also, look for opportunities to act aggressively when late position players fold before or on the flop, and now you find yourself to be the de facto late position player. Late position is where you're likely gonna be making the most money. Players in this late position act last in each post-flop round, and this is a massive advantage as they can examine everyone's actions before it's their turn to act and act accordingly. Remember that when you get passive and tight opponents in the blinds or in the UTG position, aggressive play is a very effective and profitable strategy. Hey, want to start practicing your betting skills? Visit our website, njcasino.com, where we've listed dozens of casinos and offers for you to play live poker. And finally, once you know the cards in play and your position, decide how you want to present strength or possibly weakness at the table. If you want to show dominance and get people to fold, raising pre-flop is recommended, but can also be equally effective post-flop if you're in the right position to act. In the early pre and post-flop rounds, acting like you already have a strong hand can make players fold if they're holding a weak pair or an under developed hand. That is, of course, if the raise is sized and timed properly. Getting players to fold pre-flop increases your chances of winning a hand, as you now have fewer people who may find themselves with the winning hand after limping into the river. That said, minimum betting, checks, and limped calls also tend to signify hesitation and weakness. Playing in this way allows you to maximize the value from your made hand or give yourself another full betting round to improve your holding before committing a lot of chips. So that concludes this introductory lesson on betting strategies. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Make sure to clicky to clack that like button and pound that big red subscribe button if you haven't already. My name's Dominic, wishing you luck and reminding you as always, play responsibly.